Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a very special O Knife giveaway, uh, a blast from the past with two knives, and then the knives and designs of Dirk Pinkerton. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment uh, comes from Peter, uh, Peter Ask Beater 420, a great name. Uh, and he says, uh, this was on one of my shorts called Five Intimidating Bowies. And he says, I bet your daughter's boyfriend is going to make sure he's back by 730. Yes, he better be back by 730. But most definitely, she better be back by 730. Or he might get a taste of one of these intimidating Bowies. Love the comment and uh, love the truthiness behind it. Uh, please be sure to like and comment when you watch a video. Uh, it's it's videos like this that really put wind in my sails, especially considering that there were just uh, eight 13 year old girls right outside this room for about 24 hours having a sleepover. So it really, really uh, put me in tune with that comment. All right. That said, time for a pocket check. Today, in my front right pocket, I had one of the smoother flippers in my collection. This comes to us from uh, the great Peter Carey and Monterey Bay Knives. Monterey Bay Knives out of Monterey Bay, California. And uh, what a great outfit they are. A lot of their knives are designed by Le uh, Ray Laconico. Uh, he is part of that outfit. Uh, but they also do a lot of great um, collaboration work. And uh, this, this one, this turbo is a... Peter Carey custom model uh, that I've always loved. I love Peter Carey and his knives, and turns out from speaking with him, he's actually a very, very cool dude. Um, so it was really cool to see Monterey Bay Knives bring one of his knives uh, to market like uh, Spyderco did with the uh, Rubicon and uh, one other. I can't remember which one that was, uh, but this, this is the one that really, uh, really got to me. Now, this is a contoured, uh, titanium liner lock knife and uh, has great uh, blade steel. What is this? M390, I think, uh, blade steel here. Uh, very sharp. And I had this one did up by uh, Lindy Lou and Richie B over at Knife Modders. I uh, had them put that high voltage green. I love that green. Uh, I've been carrying this one recently. I kind of forgot about it for a while. And uh, it seems to me I've talked about this one recently, maybe on Thursday Night Knives. But uh, I am going to have that pocket clip redone. I had them go to town on the pocket clip and the backspacer, and I do love it. Uh, but for the pocket clip, it's a little bit too attention getting. So I'm going to have uh, the pocket clip done like the blade and acid stone wash. Very sharp. Uh, they put a wicked screaming edge on this. And then uh, if, if I didn't uh, adequately communicate this, it is a free dropping uh, fidget meister there. Okay. So that was my front right pocket. I always carry a slip joint, as you know, and today it was a Jack Wolf knife uh, per per uh, par for the course lately. And uh, I got the old cyborg Jack. I say the old, it's less than a year old, but there are so many different knives uh, from Jack Wolf out there now. Uh, this one, you know, it's, it's, it's great to go back through the collection and uh, pull out something I haven't carried in a while and have it feel like it's brand new. And that was what happened with the cyborg jack uh such great ergonomics on this angled and faceted uh, uh handle it looks like it might be uncomfortable you know that that's canvas my card it looks like it might be uncomfortable but uh it isn't it's very comfortable sometimes angles in the hand work really really well and this would definitely be that case also a beautiful lanny's clip style clip point blade at least that's what it strikes me as, kind of Lanny's esque with that long upswept clip. Slight recurve you can see on that um, on that clip point blade. You see that a lot in traditional blades. And the idea is that over time you sharpen through that recurve. And it's not a recurve, but it's just a regular straight edge uh, with a sweep. That's how I designed the uh, the blade of the 
um, Nova one. I wanted a little bit of a recurve. Yes, it adds in the cutting capability, but also uh, gives you some belly to sharpen through over the years and not not end up with a fillet knife. So um, you see that concept at work here in the Cyborg Jack, a favorite, but they're all favorites of uh, of Jack Wolf knives. Okay, next up, my fixed blade today was from 1558 uh, Knife Company. This is uh, the Revere. And this is Josh Fisher, Master Bladesmith. This is his 15, 1558, uh, refers to a Bible passage, which I forget. I'm sorry. Um, but this is his sort of quote unquote production company. He does, uh, he's a master smith. So obviously he does incredibly intricate and beautiful uh, forged knives. But to uh, keep the lights on, like most knife makers, uh, he makes uh uh, a, a semi-production line where he has them water jetted out, presumably, and uh, has a quicker sort of production to them. Uh, this is a beaut. This was one of my uh, purchases from Blade Show 2022. I didn't make too many purchases, and this was a proud fixed blade purchase. I love that long clip point. Just a beautiful uh, hunting blade. Again, you see a recurve there that could over time sort of disappear with sharpening as that's the part of the knife that you're going to be using the most and dulling the most and sharpening the most. And uh, you'll still maintain a good usable uh, cutting edge shape. Really nice handle, uh, sort of Coke bottled from this aspect, from the top down and um, very nicely contoured. Uh, a lot of people, when I bought this, I remember showing it off at Blade Show 2022 and a lot of people, uh, knife people, uh, thought it was a Winkler, and I thought that that was curious. And I think maybe it's just the long clip. Maybe on first blush reminds people of a of a Winkler, but to me, it doesn't really. It's not very Winkler esque. Winklers are kind of, um, well, the designs are maybe similar, but they they have a beefier uh, feel and appearance. So anyway, uh, that is that for emotional support today. Of course, I always have an emotional support knife, and uh, this one I've been finding very soothing to the soul, as well as just a great cutter. And that is the Tempest Microburst designed by KC Spirion of uh, Knives Fast and Tempest Knives. He's got, what, two models and a third on the way. Uh, this in the pinion I have, and then I think he's got a third one. And then he started with the Mach 51, which was a really cool prototype. Um, and then he continued with these... Uh, these uh slightly more uh budget or, or or affordable models and man they are they are really really good knives like this one is an has just an excellent blade you can see how tall the blade is it's very thinly ground and that's a nearly full height hollow grind uh the scales are contoured the whole pack it's on the bearings the whole package is just very pleasing in very many ways okay so that's what i had in my pockets today oh look at that look at that it's a uh, black blade Black blade satin, black blade satin. It just kind of looks cool. All right, so today I had the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo, the uh, Cyborg Jack from Jack Wolf Knives, the 1558 Revere, and the uh, and the Microburst from Tempest. Let me know what you were carrying in your pockets today. Drop it in the comments below. You know I always like to hear, uh, not only for inspiration, but just to know the kind of classy individuals uh, with great knife taste that listen to this here show. So drop that down below. Uh, just a quick note, on uh, Thursday, July 20th, during Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, I will be giving away this beautiful off-grid knives, beautiful and extremely useful and tough uh, off-grid knives, Viper 2, uh, Tonto with the, with the uh, drop point. I love that so much. Putting that point right down center line uh, from the clip and the pivot. This, this of the three that they sent... I kept one, gave one away, and this one has the best action of all three. Um, mine has the worst action of all three and is still excellent. <laughs> I shouldn't say worst. The least awesome. Uh, so here we go. I just want to show the up-close detail here, if I can get the camera to focus, on the jimping on the back of the blade here. There you go. Good job. Uh, so this jimping back here is a combination of sort of old-school uh, file work except that's not file work, of course, milling work with these big slots. And that actually, without this micro jimping here, the smaller jimping gives you good grip anyway. But to add the uh, 
the tighter, uh, sharper jumps there really give you amazing grip. Um, awesome action, uh, recessed pocket clip, flat screws, um, great access to the lock bar, something I've been paying more attention to. Uh, thanks to Neves Knives. A uh, really, really great 154 cm blade and uh, just good to go. I love this thing. So I'll be giving this away uh, to a gentleman junkie. That's a, a patron member uh, of the highest order on the 20th of July. Come check it out. And even if you're not a gentleman junkie, come check it out because almost every other week, not not every other week, one other week a month at least, we do another random giveaway for anyone who joins us and can type hashtag knife. All right, next up, before we get to uh, Knife Life News, I want to show you, uh, talk about this O-Knife, O-Light summer sale that everyone's been talking about. I've been seeing the hatchet, you know, the, the tomahawk, a bunch of knives, a bunch of lights, a bunch of just cool stuff that O-Knife, O-Light, O-Light, I should say first, I guess, and O knife are putting out. It's like becoming a lifestyle brand, and they have a lot of cool stuff. They sent me some some goodies here. I want to show off, and uh, you can go check out the uh, the sale. I'm going to be putting up a video tomorrow of these four specific items with links and everything. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Tomorrow, this will already be out by the time you're listening to this this video. Uh, but of these four items, let me show you what they sent me. This is some really cool stuff. And then as you uh, peruse YouTube and see, watch everyone else's channels, you'll see the things that O Knife O Light sent other people. So they have a lot of really cool products, and uh, they're all on sale. Uh, so right now, this very cool uh, O Light. You know that they're known for their lights. That's how they started. This is a cool little magnetic um, rechargeable light that goes on your keychain. What's this called? This is called the the Mini Two. That's a that's a pretty straightforward name right on the nose. The Mini 2 is cool because this whole back end is actually a USB charger. You just plug that into a USB uh, port. And then when you're done, you just put this little uh, rubber cover over it. You can put it on your zipper pull. You can put it on your um, keychain, And you've got a great light. Good to go. I've not charged this up, so I'm not going to show you uh, what it's like. But I have a an Olight um uh, flashlight on my keychain, a, a slightly larger than this, but it's meant for that purpose. And it's amazing. I can't believe the kind of light you can get out of that little light. Speaking of which, this is the Arkfeld. This is the summer model, summer three model. So you've got four, um, four levels of bright on the light, and then you can switch it over to a laser, which is so cool because lasers are cool. And it's a green laser which makes it even cooler. And uh, yeah, I, I dig this thing. Uh, you got this really nice blue anodized. I think that's titanium. I'm not sure if that's titanium or aluminum. I got to look into that and a pocket clip and the overall form factor being flat and not round fits in the pocket. Uh, excellently. All right. Next up, speaking of excellent, their knives have been amazing. O knife. I mean, O light just decided, Hey, let's figure out knives. And they did. Uh, probably by hiring the right people. And uh, this is one of them. We just gave away the Rubato 2 sheep's foot with the uh, anodized American flag on it. Well, this one is, uh, this so far is my favorite O-knife that I've seen. Look at that incredible Warncliffe blade. Uh, just <laughs> beautifully done. I'm hearing my dog erupt upstairs. It's it's all about to go down, people. Uh, but okay, so, uh, ow, very sharp. Green anodized aluminum has that chalky feel that I like, not everyone likes, but that goes away with time if you don't like it. Deep carry pocket clip, loop over, not inset, but flat screws, so pretty good, and uh, an excellent, excellent action on this um, liner lock. And then lastly, they sent me this uh, O-Hank, everything's O, and this is a Hank right here, and we got the Rubato, I just saw this on... Uh, Everyday City Carries uh, channel. He does those cool e uh, VSMRs or whatever they're called. Uh, so yeah, Hank, for cleaning your glasses. Clean. I wouldn't blow my nose in this, but you, you could clean your knife and clean your glasses and that kind of thing. Um, so that's something uh, that, that's a little vexing about the modern day Hank game. To me, it doesn't seem at all about your nose. It seems like it's completely about your gear and then just having a cool Hank. That's why I carry 
a bandana. You can throw that thing in the washer. Old school, like my grandpa used to do. All right, so here we go. O Knife, O Life uh, has a lot of cool stuff on sale. Go check it out. I highly recommend this freeze. 154 cm i forgot to mention but look at that blade that's an amazing blade and it's got the same tip angle as a yojimbo or a uh or, or a hinderer knives worn clip so i love that all right setting this aside uh just want to say that uh well still to come we're gonna take a look at some uh, new knives and knife life news and then we're gonna get to the state of the collection and because i have no new knives this week uh which just shows incredible amounts of discipline herculean amounts of discipline uh, or just m maybe do uh, bills coming due from Blade Show. Uh, we're going to take a blast from the past because I got two new, uh, two cool knives from uh, this old sword to give away, and I love these things. Always wanted one, and they're and they're both from the past. So we'll take a look at that right on the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, so new from Giant Mouse. We talked about this maybe a month ago, two months ago, something like that. Uh, they just came out with the Atelier. The Atelier is their small version, an ace version, which is a field grade, so to speak version of the ace grand a beautiful clip point blade they call it a drop point with a swedge it, come on people that's what a clip point is uh but anyway well no that that's not exactly true but you look at it it's a clip point blade beautiful the atelier is their uh small just sub three inch version of it well they just released this in venatus 4e a uh an oodle an a bowler oodle home oodle home um steel that gets very little play but it has a lot it's a semi stainless steel very tough but also very um uh very high uh, edge retention and they put it on this knife for a limited 300 uh piece batch so interesting for you steel junkies you steel nerds out there uh to check this out uh, i, I want to show you an interesting picture in this article this is from this is from um uh, knife news and these are not knife news pictures yeah Exactly, Jim. This 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 picture here is funny because this is a you know two hundred plus dollar knife. It's a really excellent EDC, and they have it on this oily rag, this disgusting looking you know work rag. And I get what they're doing. This is a product picture, and they're trying to show you this isn't a safe queen. This is something you want to take to the garage and use hard. And and I get it, but in terms of beauty shots for knives, this one just made me chuckle. That's all. It's just oh, just put it on an oily rag. And uh, and and open it halfway. <laughs> we'll sell it that way. So anyway, uh, check this out if you're interested. Uh, I have never had a giant mouse. I love the two designers responsible, uh, Vox and um, uh, 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 um, Jesper Voxnes and um, the two Danish. Oh my God, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Um, all right, someone drop it in the comments below. It's Vox and. Uh, the other Danish guy who are amazing. I'm sorry not to not to belittle their work, uh, having a senior moment. But anyway, uh, love their work. I've never had one of their knives though because they've always been just slightly south of my, you know, of my wheelhouse in terms of carry size, and that's been my good excuse uh, for a while. But I don't know how much longer I can hold out because I love the look of the Atelier. Of course, I would get the Ace Grand. I, I just think it's a beautiful clip point blade. Uh, and. Uh, uh, all right, it'll come to me and I will I will say it before you can even type it in the comment. All right, next up on Knife Life News, Leatherman has the Garage Project. This is a very limited release uh, special project that they do on an annual basis. <clears throat> and this year, well, we have the Leatherman Garage Project number five. It's already sold out. It was sold out by the time uh, anyone could even write about it. It sold out like lickety split. This one is a 40-year um, anniversary model. It looks 
cool. I mean, you know, I'm not much of a, a multi-tool guy, but I look at this and I'm like, that's a that's a damn good looking multi-tool. It's it's all sort of Cerakoted white, at least the frame is. And then you have a an awesome tool set to include, wait for it, a MagnaCut blade. That's right, a MagnaCut sheep's foot blade with Cerakote on it. And it's the one, it's Cerakoted the same color as the pocket clip. This thing looks very cool. And yes, it flew off the the virtual shelves in I think it was sold out in less than like three minutes or something like that. So very nice looking blade shape, very uh, collectible. Obviously, people are probably not going to use this, but how great would it be if they would release something like this kind of on the on a permanent level? Uh, as long as they have that Magna Cut at 63, 64 uh, Rockwell hardness. Otherwise, we might have riots in the street a la 2020. So uh, careful with that one, Leatherman. Uh, but very cool garage project number five featuring Magna Cut Steel. All right, next up from Best Tech Man. That's the budget version or the budget uh, uh, offshoot company of Best Tech. Best Tech Man, the Dundee was the very first one that came out. They have uh, now three knives. It's the Dundee and then that very cool looking one that looks like the Iridium uh, that I can't remember the name of. And then this, their third, is a mini Dundee. This is a design by Ostop Hell, and it very much looks like an Ostop Hell design, especially in the handle. Um, they made a uh, south, uh, just south of three inch version of this. Again, it's a 2.98 D2 blade and uh, the the original one is 3.4 inches so not huge but just big enough that uh, they wanted to do a sub three inch and uh, a great looking design everything about it is about exactly the same it's just scaled down like i cannot see any any uh any difference but uh i like it i like best tech man i like the idea of it though you know I'd like to see more models uh, like Sencut or Civivi. You know, when they when they came out with Civivi and they were the Wii uh, budget alternative, they they came out with th uh, three designs initially, and then that that plumed up. Same uh, same with Sencut. So when they came out with Sencut as a budget option to Civivi, they had uh, three models. I think they came out with initially too. So kind of feel like Best Tech Man has a little catch up to do, but I love Best Tech, and I had that Dundee. And uh, that was a great knife. So uh, I think the mini Dundee will be right up your alley if you like less than three inch knives. All right. Before we wrap Knife Life News, I want to talk about a few victories for knife rights in three states. One of them is my home state right here. On July 1st in Virginia, it became legal to conceal carry a, an automatic knife. And phew, Awesome. What's an automatic knife? Before you start clutching your pearls, thinking I'm talking about automatic weapons, which are so dangerous, uh, we're talking about switchblades. We're talking about uh, blades that come out of the handle with the use of an actuator and a spring, uh, as opposed to a flipper tab and a spring. So really very, very little difference. Actually, more opportunity for a misfire. Um, but anyway, for some reason, I guess it's been since... Uh, James Dean and the and the juvenile delinquent laws of the 1950s, people have thought that automatic knives are just especially dangerous. And then in my state, where uh, we had a, a bozo governor uh, for a long time uh, who was just trying to cover his his own um, blackface scandal, he he held up a bunch of knife rights uh, actions in our in our state senate, and uh, those died on the vine. And then when we got a new um, mayor, a uh, new uh, governor, um, Youngkin, this stuff all started going through. And now we can carry switchblades concealed. That just means in our pockets where no one can see them and, uh, and be legal citizens. So very happy about that. In Florida, they got the permitless carry, including knives, which takes effect, which is even, you know, even better. That means you can, you can carry a weapon no matter kind of what it is, including knives, uh, without having to go and get a special license from the government, from your from your daddy at the government. So that love that uh, Florida, they seem to be way ahead. Uh, that's that's a if you if you didn't pick up on it, that's a taxi driver line, except uh, the, in in the taxi driver, they say they're way ahead out in California. Well, that's no longer the case. Uh, they are not way ahead out in California. But 
still a beautiful state with a lot of great people in it. Anyway, okay, so third is in Tennessee. And in Tennessee, uh, pocket knife carry at, uh, at this is a, a kind of a funny one to me, but there was uh, now people can legally carry a pocket knife at a, at a polling place if it's in a school. So before this, you couldn't carry a knife to a school if you were going to vote, you know, for your local councilman or whatever. Uh, and now you can. And it's crazy to me that it took legal action and, and the expense and the effort of, of knife rights to make that one possible. But, you know, thank, uh, thank Doug Ritter. Thanks, Doug Ritter, for making all this stuff uh, possible again. So uh, three victories from knife rights all uh, enacted on July 1st. And, uh, well, very exciting, especially for me and this automatic knife thing. Not that I wasn't doing that beforehand, but now I'm doing it legally. Uh, also, as uh, Jim is reminding me, throwing this up here, check out the Ultimate Steel, uh, 2023 Ultimate Steel. Ultimate Steel is their annual, is Knife Rights annual fundraising uh, uh, campaign. And you can get a lot of knives from entering uh, into and, and supporting it. So uh, go over there and check it out. They have tons of prizes. It's pretty cool. All right. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a blast or take a look at a blast from the past. And then the knives of Dirk Pinkerton, uh, one of my favorites. And I'm just realizing my collection starting to swell. So I need to catalog it. Uh, that's coming up right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So this blast from the past uh, comes from me courtesy of Dave. Thank you, Dave. Uh, this is the Real Steel H6 Blue Sheep. Now, that's I, I remember this as the H6. Maybe the Blue Sheep is this uh, particular model. But this was the first model I remember uh, Real Steel producing. Um, and I remember when it came out that I was just smitten with the blade shape. I love that blade shape. Now, you know me, I'm not a huge, enthusiastic drop point consumer, uh, even though I've got a ton of them in my collection. But this kind with that long swedge and that, that humpback reminds me a little bit of a Walter Brend type design. Uh, this thing immediately resonated with me. And, and it's one that I let slip away. You know, I never had it. I had a chance to buy it, never got it. And, uh, in a box of giveaway knives that Dave sent here recently, uh, this was lurking and I was so thrilled to finally get a chance to, uh, to experience it. And it is ultra smooth on washers. I know, I know that, um, bearings are the thing and there's nothing smoother than bearings and they drop shut and all that. But I maintain like many that washers are in many ways as gratifying, if not more, just to, to fidget with, to open, to close, to use. They also uh, can lend a bit of confidence uh, in the cutting. Uh, I, I do, you know, the, I think the difference is minuscule, but I do feel like washers, and note the word feel, this is not coming from real anecdotal uh, experience, but I feel like washers are just a little bit more robust. And maybe that's because sand and grit and gunk and filth and muck can get in the, in the, pivot bearings of a bearing knife and not really so much with uh, a washer knife as much. But I also just love the thin, I mean, the uh, the constant resistance to open and closing that hydraulic feel. And then this is 14C28N, and I don't know if it came like this, but it is razor sharp, razor sharp. I thought just from feeling it like, oh yeah, that's pretty thin. That's, that's uh, you know, but I wasn't expecting it to glide through paper making s curves as easily as it did sorry if you hear old auto going off upstairs uh it's got a nice backspacer here geared backspacer and that camo pattern g10 is so cool you know haven't seen that for a while that was big with spider co on their 
paramilitary two for a while. <clears throat> for a while, uh, they were offering the paramilitary two with that camo. I'm not sure if they are anymore. And it was big. And then I don't know. It seems like you just don't see it that much. That digi cam. So blast from the past, not only on the on the whole model itself, but also on this um, handle material, the camo um, G10. Very cool. Now the next one also in that box uh, that I. I just think is so cool. And I remember looking at it um, and then not getting it, but uh, it's this, it's the Kaiser um, sliver and it's an aluminum anodized fluted, like it's contoured this way. And it's all also fluted in a spiral sort of uh, fashion and, or, or radiating like sun uh, pattern. And it's, it's very pleasing to the eye and to the hand. And then also on washers, when you open it, it reminds me of like a Pesh Cobbs or some sort of, um, you know, near Asian or far Eastern. I don't know. I don't know. It, it just looks like a Pesh Cobbs to me. And I'm not even sure where those come from. Uh, it's somewhere in the Middle East, uh, in, in, in the East, east asia maybe or or north africa but i don't know something about this blade shape is very appealing to me uh ever so slight recurve tip down low but it's still a drop point and you still have a belly so you got use of that tip in a in a in a utility way pretty easily and what i mean utility way i just mean using that tip for the kind of cuts we do a lot like draw cuts and pull cuts and stuff like that um very very comfortable package and then when you're gripping it like this you have a an overall downward angle to that blade which just means accelerated cutting it means really efficient cutting and also just uh, an overall package that's quite handsome I, I really like this one too so two blasts from the past uh, i thank dave for passing these along because these are two that i always eyed up um online and then just never got so it's a great experience to to feel them and then eventually uh, they will get passed along in a giveaway and they could be yours all right so i want to get to dirk pinkerton so uh, dirk pinkerton uh, came onto my radar a few years ago uh, he's been around a while designing knives uh, i think first the first time i ever saw a dirk pinkerton knife it was the be warned knife or is that no, no, that was Michael Janich. It was the warning knife. Uh, and it was a Warncliffe self-defense knife that was made uh, for, oh, who was that? It was one of the, it was like Smith & Wesson uh, who bought up a tactical knife company. And um, anyway, oh, Blackhawk. It was Blackhawk, the Blackhawk warning. And um, so I noted the the Warncliffe style because I do love that Warncliffe style. But then and then he started coming on the scene over and over and over. He's got so many great designs that have been produced by um, production houses and OEMs. Some of them OEM'd for his shingle and then others he's licensed to those companies. He's incredibly prolific and his work is always going back and forth between tactical practical tactical practical and and they're and they they volley back and forth to the point where um you know which came first the chicken or the egg so you know i like that um and then it also happens that he's an amazing knife maker by hand so i have three of his custom knives i'll show off too but let's start with a real famous one it is real famous uh this is the uh this is the proponent. And this one here is the mini proponent. I bought two of these recently from Dirk himself because he had some prototypes of various knives laying around and, and he sent out an email to a number of, of people that he's a smart man. He knows who's uh, rabid for his work. So uh, sent a number of people emails and 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 this is what I, I got this and something else that I'll show you later. But uh, this proponent is a pretty incredible knife uh if this is the small one and it's pretty uh, big it's pretty beefy uh but th they he came out with this with artisan cutlery and it was a a uh, blockbuster i think this was a knife uh, the proponent was one that really put dirk on the map um in terms of people uh, not only gravitating towards his designs but then knowing who designed it and seeking more 
Uh, this was a, a real breakthrough knife, I think, for him. Uh, but that's that tall Warncliffe blade. And even though it's a pretty thick blade stock and uh, only a saber ground blade, it's so tall from from uh, top to bottom that it is very slicey behind the edge. It's unexpected because of how thick it looks, but it's a it's a super cutter. And then uh, that width there keeps that tip which has that angle that I love, you know, uh, a working Warncliffe and angle. It keeps the tip very um, strong. So funny thing was uh, I ordered that I asked for this one first, and then I noticed also a maroon linen micarta. So I got them both. Uh, it turns out that the, the, um, this one, what is that material? That burlap micarta version had wicked, wicked lockstick. Like, I mean, not lock stick, but lock slip, and uh, it would just pop out. And it, unless you really, really whipped it out with a lot of uh, force, it would it wouldn't lock up. So I brought it to work and just left it in my drawer at work. And somehow, doing that fixed it. It was like, I swear, I'll be better. I'll lock up better. Just take me home. Leave, you know, get me out of this damn office. And and it really, really did the trick. This is now somehow without any noodling has become a very trust trustable lockup uh, knife. So really, really excellent. I also love how uh, the two handles here are starting to take on my personal funk signature and, you know, really patining up that micarta. You got, um, what do you call it? Uh, ergonomics all day long. I mean, it's very neutral. You know, you just have an ever, uh, you just have a, um, a tapering handle here with one finger choil. I think one finger choil is as many choils as we ever need. Uh, but one finger choil there and pretty much any grip, reverse, uh, also in a Pakal grip, heaven forbid you need that. Uh, it just really works out well with that neutral style handle. Uh, the grooves here are very nice. Your hand wraps around and really digs in to those grooves. Also, the fuller on this blade is amazing and it makes it a little bit lighter. You can use it to open it if you come down low, but it's definitely not a reverse flicker. And then lastly, that hole there, the hole just south of the pivot is there to put a pin through, a threaded pin. You can screw it in there and then you have a virtual fixed blade knife. Uh, I like it because it's campy and not campy. I like it because it's totally unnecessary and uh, it, and it just makes it seem like you know, it really does make it a stouter blade, but I, I can't imagine ever really using it. I've actually lost track of where my pins are. I know, I know they're around here somewhere, but but that is the proponent. Now, uh, this is a shape, a blade shape that Dirk Pinkerton is known for. You'll see several other Warren Cliffs uh, in this in this list. Warren Cliffs, reverse tantos, angled sheepfoots. I'm not sure what we're going to call them. I'm going to call them Warren Cliffs. Okay, next up, this one. I got from Dirk a little pocket lint in there uh, not too long ago. And I believe this is out now. This is the Gambit. Oops. I can't. Yeah, there we go. I'm very bad with the front flipper on this with my left hand. The Gambit. Now, this is ordinarily not my cup of tea because it's a cleaver blade. And, you know, I like a point. I like thrust, thrust uh, to be able to thrust. But uh, this one with the swoop from the handle and this sort of overall S shape from that from the pommel to the tip of the blade reminds me of a very large, uh, or reminds me of a menacing straight razor sort of, uh, Sweeney Todd demon barber of fleet street kind of stuff. And, uh, though it is small, this is a really excellent, uh, EDC knife. Look at the downward sweep of that, of that, uh, bellied blade from the hand. So you got the downward angle, which means more efficient cutting, but you still have, have that sweep so you can do a lot of things with this blade uh, that you could that you would be able to do with a recurve and that you would be able to do with that sort of downward raked handle that you would see on like a filipino blade or on worn uh not worn close uh, slip joint blades and that, that kind of thing this one has several opening holes on the uh on the sorry my left on the blade here you can find purchase in any one of those five holes to to either slow roll it or to flick it. Uh, this one is an unusual 
knife. This is from Shielden, by the way. Unusual for Dirk. It just doesn't look like a Pinkerton to me. But now it does. Um, so there it is. Shielden. They make a good knife, man. Uh, and, and again, look at that. Shielden, this is an inexpensive knife from a company that makes inexpensive knives. And yet they find it in their budget to uh, to mill out a slot for the pocket clip and to find some flat screws. So good on you, Shielden. All right, so here's one that to me is very, um, very much a stereotypical uh, Dirk Pinkerton, if you can call it that. Uh, or I should say an iconic, not an iconic. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this is Dirk Pinkerton all day long. This is the Main Street. And again, we have a really useful Warncliffe um, blade here. You can see this one's been used a lot, uh, but that coating's held up pretty nicely. Um, 154, 154 cm blade steel. But what I'm saying is a very, very useful Warncliffe blade shape that flexes very well into self-defense. We know from the Yojimbo that that's, that that very straight blade with the triangular pointed tip <laughs> makes an excellent self-defense uh, blade. But we also know it makes a great utility blade. So this is a, a, a perfect blend, perfect combination of those. Um, and it comes in a variety of flavors. And now you can get this in a bar lock, which uh, has me has me wanting one uh, because Kaiser, I mean, a concept is doing amazing stuff with their bar locks, as is pretty much everyone else. Uh, now that uh, now that Benchmade doesn't have exclusive on it. This is one that rode in my waistband for a long time. This is a good uh, in the waistband knife because it's so slender but robust and uh, self defense -y if need be. I think it looks really good when you turn it upside down. Uh, but I had a really awesome patina going on this uh, micarta, and last summer I put it in a wet bathing suit, and the chlorine in the pocket totally bleached the handle, which bummed me out. First world problems, Bob. Uh, check out Concept. They, I love their work. They do awesome, awesome knives. Uh, some graduates of Kaiser Knives started a concept and they're just killing it next up is uh from another person who was a graduate of kaiser knives uh, this comes from beyond edc this is one of their mid-tier asymmetrical line knives this is the asymmetrical contact and uh, i gotta say of all of the uh worn cliffs by dirk pinkerton that i have or don't have this is my favorite. This is a jewel of a knife. This thing is a little, or as uh, Nick Shabazz would say, it's a gem. Uh, I love everything about this knife. The design, the build, the execution, the, the um, fidgetiness, even the size. And it's a little bit smaller than my normal um, preferred carry. Um, it flexes from utility to self-defense better than any of any of the any of his folders, if you ask me, with the possible exception of the next one. Uh, but that is because of that perfect, again, Warncliffe uh, with the with the uh, excellent tip for thrusting. And instead of raking downward, that edge rakes upward. And we see that sometimes in hinderers. We see that in, in the hinderer half-track Warncliffe. And uh, at first, it's a little strange to me when you, when you uh, put the spine of the blade flat like that to see that edge creep upward. But then in use, it it works very well, you know, in, in all your preferred grips. And then you can reverse grip it in a Pakal style. And it has that reach, that point reach that you want with a Pakal style knife. So it gives you everything. It angles the blade up. It angles the blade down. Um, this, this blade shape in the orientation with this handle shape is a, a perfect knife. And then you add the the excellent build and all of the gription that goes all around the handle. Um, and then the lightweight. You can have a lightweight titanium frame with S35EN and an amazing Warncliffe blade in your pocket. Uh, and it's not going to weigh you down. So uh, excellent, excellent knife. I love that asymmetrical contact. Uh, I had a great time. I actually had dinner with uh, with David from from Beyond EDC and Dirk Pinkerton, and then um, and then another gentleman knife designer showed up, and it was a cool dinner. Uh, this was at Blade Show, and it was cool to be a fly on the wall and hear 
you know, they talked a little bit of business or what's going on with certain designs and stuff. And I was just sitting there like listening and it was cool. Uh, so asymmetrical, making some really great knives and they have a new Warncliffe. I got to check out from Dirk with the lock with a button lock. That's right in the pivot. So very, very cool innovation there all right next up i said there are few i said that the last one the contact flexes from from utility to um to tactical or self defense better than any and and i guess i would have to say that because this next one kind of errs on the side of self-defense uh, by far and, uh, and there are two versions of this uh this is the kaiser inversion and then this is the Pinkerton inversion. So this this is a prototype of uh, a, a different model inversion coming out uh, from Dirk Pinkerton himself. But this one is a prototype still in the works. He's got one right now, a pre-order up on his website that's more similar to this. It has this handle shape, but it's a titanium frame lock and it has a removable ring, a titanium ring that uh, screw into these two screws here and comes out at a 90 degree angle from the handle. You can see a video here on this channel of a prototype of that knife uh, that I did a while back. But if you have any misgivings about ringed knives, that knife will, will probably eliminate them because here, I'm going to do this up here, this camera, because when you grip the knife like this, there is no, the, the ring just covers your finger. In other words, Sometimes people get the angle wrong, and you're, and to accommodate the ring, you're 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 changing your fist a little bit or moving your finger to accommodate that. With this, if you can grab the knife like this, the ring just goes around your finger. It's amazing, and uh, uh, and it's chamfered and it's you know it's well done. But what what is this designed for? It looks so bizarre. I'm going to put this back down in here. Uh, so it looks so bizarre, like it's got a broken stop pin in the blade. Maybe it's backwards in the handle. Like, shouldn't this be flipped around? And um, well, yes, except this is set up for Pical style fighting. And that is uh, with the tip down and the edge in. And I guess I shouldn't exactly say fighting. It's not like two guys get knives in their hands like this and start fighting. It's just they're killing each other because as, a, as an old martial arts teacher used to say, uh, the guy who wins the knife fight is the one who dies second. <laughs> so, I mean, that would definitely be the case. So this is more of a self-defense knife. This is more of a get-off-me knife. It's not a dueling knife or anything like that. Uh, not that that really happens anymore. But uh, this is a strictly uh, pull it out of your pocket and get the person off of you style knife. Um, it is set up with this wave-like feature. Both of them are. Uh, here it is a, a, a brass disc. Uh, that shipped extra with the um, with the Kaiser inversion, and then they had something that was more uh, slender. I have it. In the, it's, oh, more of a thumb disc without this, without this canted up section to grip the pocket. That's what it is. Um, so also you get a flipper tab on that, and the discontinued Kaiser here is a reverse Tonto. I guess that makes sense for that, or a curved Warncliffe. But the one that he's dropping uh, from his own company, he has removed that front angle um, because uh, certain people have tested it out, like um, like Ryan Atkinson, Fieldworks, for instance, and has reported that when going into a pig cadaver for testing, uh, this this angle hangs up a little bit uh, or just slows the blade down. Whereas you take that angle off and give it just like a crow's beak here and it slips right in. And seeing as this is for self-defense, uh, why not? This one here, this prototype, I'm not sure who made it, is a liner lock. It's got a, a pretty thin liner lock at that. But here's the thing. When you're using this as it should be used, you're going against the stop pin. In this case, it's an internal stop pin. And um, so you're not going against the lock. You're not exerting force against the lock. You're exerting force against the stop pin, like in most knives. So... In this case, it, it seems like a liner lock is just fine. Oftentimes, people will, will not recommend a liner lock for a uh, for self-defense knife, thinking that um, without reinforcing that lock, lock up like you would be with your fist in a um, uh, frame lock, you run the danger of that knife folding on you. Not so much with this. 
So keep your eyes peeled on Pinkerton Knives and his um, this one. Uh, this is he, prototypes like this are in a number of hands, and um, I'm grateful to have it. Um, but he will be releasing something like this in the future. But right now, check out his uh, his pre-order of the titanium one with the ring. I have a feeling I'm going to have a little inversion collection here, and and it's a good thing because there aren't enough to call style folders. There are more and more now, but you know. Uh, best best to be safe. Okay, next one is also a double. I have two of these, and this is based on probably my favorite, one of my favorite knives from history, definitely my favorite folding knife from history, and that's the Spanish Navaja, the big ratchet folder, uh, ratcheting lock folder uh, that was developed when Spaniards were no longer allowed to carry swords around with them to to uh, you know as fashion and to settle their differences. So they they created these big sword-like folders. And this is Dirk's take on it. And here are two of them. They are only available at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This is the Night Horse G10 uh, with, uh, what is it, 14C? This is the, uh, yeah, G10 with 14C, 28N blade steel and ultra, ultra buttery action. I mean, just ridiculous drop shut action. 30 bucks. I cannot believe they're selling this thing for 30 bucks. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm not sure how they're doing that, but this is an incredible deal at 30 bucks. Um, and it comes in three different colors of G10. That's uh, OD green, black, and this nice uh, coyote or a tan. And then it comes in three varieties of uh, titanium frame lock. Uh, this one is the bronze. It, there's a blue and a third one. Third, maybe it's a black anodized. I can't remember. Um, but same beautiful uh, Navaja blade shape with that Spanish clip with a long, flat, uh, level Spanish clip tip, and then and then that deep dip down, and then that belly, and then the pointy. Uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, yes, very utilitarian. Yes, you can use this for all sorts of stuff. But to me, with that horn-shaped handle that allows you to choke way back and gives you all that reach, this is a 4.25-inch blade, by the way. Uh, this is a kind of a fighting knife, right? I mean, that's how it's that's what it's bred from. Um, this is a knife that you carried to, to protect your honor, you know? And uh, I think it's a really excellent modern interpretation you know this and the cold steel espada by far are the two most graceful beautiful and i would say um accurate to the spirit modern reproductions or modern interpretations of the classic spanish navaja i i do find myself carrying this g10 version more it's a little bit lighter the action is exquisite uh, i also dropped this on its tip and reprofiled it so i feel much less um uh, squeamish about using it, whereas this one uh, is a prototype, and I bought it from Dirk, and so I want to keep it somewhat pristine. Um, and there's a lot more weight on this one. There's there's no weight relief in those slabs of titanium, which is at once um, great because I love the weight, and then at the same time, I wouldn't mind if it were lighter, so I could carry it in uh, lighter pants, if you will. But this G10 version takes care of that really really check it out uh if you have 30 bucks rattling around in your pocket and you're and you're willing to spend that on on a knife go to smoky mountain knife works and buy the the dirk pinkerton night horse navaja it is one worth having for sure next up uh three custom knives that i'll show off briefly you've seen these a lot because i love them so much and i carry them quite a bit uh, this one I got at Blade Show 2023 this year. This is the Fire Ant. Now, he has a Kaiser folder called the Fire Ant that has a similar blade. Uh, but this is the custom fix blade. Triple-edged Fire Ant. The only triple-edged Fire Ant I saw at his table. I'd love to think it's the only one in existence. I'm sure it isn't. Blue and black layered rich light makes for a super comfortable handle. It, it is contoured nicely, fits fits the hand perfectly, just enough uh, there, and uh, really, really good aggressive jimping here that stops your thumb from running up onto that very sharp secondary edge. I'm going to come in close for, 
for a little bit of focus here. Um, again, hand ground. Well, I didn't, I didn't say it to begin with. This is one of his hand ground blades and it is exquisite like all the others. Uh, it has begun to lose some of that coating just from coming in and out of the sheath so much. This one gets a lot of carry right up front. D2 blade steel, by the way. This one gets a lot of carry right up front in appendix. And so if you're looking down your belly at your waistline, this is how I carry it. Belt runs through here. And this kind of follows that fold between the thigh and the and the pelvis. And it fits perfectly and you don't, don't feel it at all. It's a, it's a sweet knife. And uh, even this angular handle against the belly doesn't bug. It's, it's really nicely contoured, feels great in hand. I'm gonna leave that up and show you the next one. This one I got at Blade Show 2021, I think. Uh, this is the Cave Bear. Oh, you know, I've shown this one off quite a bit. Uh, it is a Pakal style knife, naturally. You look at it, you see the, the angle of that blade. You know it wants to be held like this. But you've got that edge forward and edge back and a really, well, by the way, perfectly ground quad uh, bevels there. Just exquisitely done nitro v stamped in there and um black coating and the ronald mcdonald micarta that i love so much um but also in uh standard grip it it's very evocative of a middle eastern sort of double-edged middle eastern blade and i really like it like this too this is a jack of all trades i mean no it's not no it's not it is not a jack of all trades but you can carry you can hold it in many different ways for its intended purpose, but it's not a jack of all trades in that you're not going to cut carpet with that knife. It'd be capable of it, but you'd be an idiot to do so. Okay. Last up in my, in my list, and certainly it will not be the last over time because uh, I'm, you know, yeah, there are a lot more Pinkertons I want and he keeps coming up with new ones. Plus he's got this real affinity for ethnographic knives, like the stuff I have up here that I also love. So uh, there's always that influence going into his designs. Like this next one, the Razorback, he told me is influenced by two different knives, the Kanjar of the Middle East, a curved double-edged blade, and then the Hell's Bells Bowie by um, Bill Bagwell, a, a Bowie legend um, for his fighting techniques and also for his blade designs. And, and, and you know, I trust him because... Dirk is the designer. I just don't see that influence here, but I'm glad. Uh, I always love the Hell's Bells Bowie, so whatever influence he gleaned from that to create this amazing knife, uh, I'm, I'm on board. Uh, this is L-Max. I don't have too many L-Max blades. It's cool to have one fully sharpened on the back, fully sharpened on the front. This is just a wicked, wicked, wicked blade. Perfect size handle. It's not any longer than it needs to be to hold in reverse grip and cap that pommel and has incredible grip this way, just enough and great jimping. Um, yeah, love this. I've seen it with the bayonet grind where the, the sharpened edge comes up to about here and it's jimped up here. And uh, I do like that. I also like having this full edge. So give me all options. I'll take them all. But uh, this happens to be a great, or I put one of these sort of cheap, in the waistband clips on it. This happens to be a great running shorts uh, around the house or sweatpants or pajamas around the house knife, believe it or not. Um, it just kind of rides in the waist. It's pretty light. And, uh, you know, any, uninv any uninvited guests come along, uh, you know, this is along for the ride. And yes, you do take a knife to a gunfight as uh, Tim Kell just posted in his video. Yes, yes, of course you take a knife to a gunfight. You also take a gun, but uh, yeah, take a knife to a gunfight. It's a good idea because if you get real close, you might be happy you have it. You'd be happy you have any of these Pinkerton knives because they all flex between that practical and tactical. When I was coming up with this episode, that was my original intent. Like I want to do a show about folders that are both practical and tactical. And uh, I know I've done stuff like that before, but I was looking everything I was pulling out was a Pinkerton. And I thought, why not just do one on him? So check out Dirk Pinkerton, his, uh, his production designs uh, range. You can get them for inexpensive. You can get them for uh, premium. 
And then also don't forget about his custom knives. So there you go. One of my favorite designers uh, and knife makers in general. Thanks for coming on this little journey down uh, knife lane with me. Uh, you can download this podcast and others from us here right there at those podcast apps to my left or your my over here on the screen. And you can also uh, check us out on Patreon. You can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon or you can scan the QR code on the screen and uh, find out what you can get. Uh, as you help support the show. Uh, be sure to join us on uh, Thursday night, tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, where we get together and we wax poetic about knives, all in one awesome group. Beginning of the weekend. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast mm -hmm.